Hello, hello, and thanks for joining me again, you lovely purview people. But no, we're not going to make that a thing. No, I don't like it. Uh, anyway, hi. Uh, I am looking at purview and synapse today. So I kind of did my classic thing of going, I'm just going to go and have a play and assume I know what I'm doing, and then suddenly find out that most of what I assumed was wrong or different, and yeah, we'll learn from there. So the main thing I'm looking at is when you go into synapse, you've got a little button saying attached to purview. And when you go into purview, you've got a little button saying attached to synapse, and actually they do different things. So we'll have a look at what both options mean, how you hook these things up, what does work, what doesn't work, and where we go from there. As always, do not forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's any other parts of this whole ecosystem you'd like me to cover. Although Power BI is coming up, I just haven't built any Power BI reports yet. We'll get to that, we'll get to it. But for now, we're looking straight at Synapse, so let's go ahead. So I've got my purview sat here, ready and waiting to go. And on the other side, I've got Synapse all up and running and I've been running some stuff. See, I've been failing things and running things, and there's just stuff going on. So, I want to take this whole Synapse workspace, and I want to attach it to Purview. So I've got a few things in here. I've got some data. I've got kind of various different linked data stores. I've got some databases. I've got loads of um, Hive databases. Zoom in a little. So you can see I've got a dedicated SQL pool currently turned on burning all my money. And I've got some SQL tables, I've got some Spark, I've got a load of different stuff sitting around inside my signups currently. And I was like, okay, I would like to automatically register all of the things, please. What I would like to do is go into Purview and say, I wanna see what, Delta Spark, and be able to actually see I've got addresses and originals. That's my plan, I was like, yes, that's what I want. How do I do that? So I was having a play around and I made an assumption and my assumption was incorrect. I assumed that that's what this button does and that's not true. So actually what we can do here is we can say to Synapse, this is where to go and connect to Purview, but this does not do a push. This is not taking all of my various different assets in Synapse and pushing it out to Purview. And I was completely incorrect in that that's how I thought it worked. It does not work that way. Do not expect it to work that way. So if you're in Synapse, you've got Purview. Um, so I've, I've currently got one associated. If I just disconnect that, we'll just try again. Don't know how long this will take. Uh, but essentially, it's just going to ask you basically for a linked service, basically how to go and connect to a, a given Purview account. There we go. So I want to connect to a Purview account. Where's your Purview? It's there. Done. I mean, you know, I thought I'd show you how to do it. It's fairly straightforward. So this is kind of just going and using uh, some assumption to make sure I've got access, connecting to me, going through and doing that. So that actually goes through and connects to Purview. And then I really excitedly, like a kid in Christmas, ran over to um, Purview, tried to search, I was about to say Google, <laughs> I tried to search for my various databases and they weren't there. That's because again, this is not doing a push. What this is actually doing, which I had no idea about until I kind of dug into it, it's enabling a purview search up here in my search bar. So I can do things like I can go and say, what do I have that relates to customer? And I get a list of things. And these aren't in Synapse. These are all from purview. So what this is actually doing is hooking up the data discovery experience from purview, using purview as the backend catalog, and then allowing me to find it in here. So I can go, oh, where, where are people's names? Um, I can go and say, well, where do I have something stored in a lake? Uh, and I've got various things I've searched for. But what customer things do I have? So I've got some Gen 2 paths. I am so excited that I have some resource sets that have picked up the right name rather than calling themselves Spark Partitions. Um, and we can go and have a look at that. We can go, yes, customer, that's the thing I want to go and query. And again, this is just the normal purview stuff, the stuff that you see normally the schema, the lineage, anything that we've got registered in Purview already for this, we can go and get. And then we have these sneaky little Synapse buttons. So I can say, I want to make a new link service to this thing. So this one's in Sample Lake. I don't currently have Sample Lake hooked up to Synapse at all. So I can say, I want to create a new link service and that will actually plug in the bits and the keys and everything I need to create that link service and make it available, register that source with my Synapse workspace. So using Purview as the back end, I can say, right, where, where is the stuff? Cool, I want to connect to that. Whereas the old way of doing things, I would have to create a link service with Synapse, tell Synapse to connect to a system, 
then go and have a look what's in that system and then decide if it's useful. This allows me to go, right, what's in all of the data estate that I've mapped and then only create connections to the things I actually want to connect to, which is great. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I can do an integration data set if I want instead. So if I, rather than going connect to the server, the lake, the database, the database server, I can connect to the object, the, um, you know, the path in the lake that goes to that particular thing. Now, it's, 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 it doesn't work for uh, Spark Partitions yet. It assumes that's part of my location. I'd have to go like that if I actually wanted to connect to it, but we're not going to judge them for that just yet. Um, and it doesn't come up with a linked service. So I've got to do it in order. If I wanted a, an integration data set, I'd have to create a linked service first and then create an integration uh, data set to that. And, but then I can go and connect to it. So cool. Uh, and I've got developers as well. I can only do data flows, weirdly. I mean, so I can't like say, I would like, I would like a spark over that, please. Um, but at least, you know, we can go and build things and it'll go and hook up and it'll, uh, again, fail to do spark partitions, but it'll go and be able to understand things and talk to things. So that to me was a real surprise. I wasn't expecting to get this little purview search bar that allows me to then open up my Synapse workspace to the whole of the data estate that I've exposed to purview. So if you are registering, if you're associating purview with Synapse, through Synapse. It's very much a kind of a, a pull, right? We're saying to Synapse, you can go and get data from Purview and bring it in. You're not telling it to push all of its data into Purview. So on the other side, if we go and have a look in Purview, if we pick, um, if we're looking for uh, HTAP, let's go and have a look for HTAP in my Purview account. I'm pretty sure that won't exist unless I've accidentally done a test on that before. Uh, so I've only got things I've got in my lake already. I don't have those five objects. I don't have the actual tables. My sales table doesn't exist. I've only got the, the result of it, the underlying lake elements that I've pushed there previously. You know, so if I was, when I was doing the test, I was looking for this, I created the new, not SQL data warehouse, not no SQL, not SQL data warehouse, because it's a dedicated SQL pool, obviously. Um, and I created that expecting to push that stuff through to purview. And of course it doesn't. Um, so what you have to do on the other side, if you want to represent elements of your Synapse workspace inside Purview, you treat it the same as everything else. We have to go into our sources. Go okay, make that a little bit bigger over that. Oh, no, can't go too big, otherwise it disappears. Um, we had to go into sources. I had to go, I would like a new source, please. Register my new source. We do have Azure Synapse Analytics, formerly SQL DW, uh, but that is just looking at the dedicated SQL pools. So that is not saying I want to connect to a Synapse workspace and hoover up all of the linked services, all of the things it knows about, all of the notebooks and SQL scripts. That is not part of it currently. It's just saying, hey, I want to go and connect to a SQL data warehouse. I need to say, well, which one I'm connecting to, advancing Synapse. And then I want to go and connect to which collection do I want to register into which of these things. I should put it into a test thing. And then I get that kind of, uh, I get that register but that is just pointing at the service. And um, we understand a bit more when we try and scan it, then we can see what it's actually talking to, talk to a database name. The only database it can see is that not SQL data warehouse. And that's because that's the only one in this list that is a dedicated SQL pool. It's the only one that is the SQL data warehouse, the MPP style SQL pool. So none of the other bits come in. So currently in terms of what Purview can understand from a Synapse point of view, it is just um, that kind of SQL data warehouse bit. And I think there's one of your limitations, like I'm not sure who understands views currently, don't know what it thinks about external tables. I've not, I've honestly, I've barely dug into it to actually understand what's going on there. I was so shocked by the purview search. I spent most of my time there, honestly. So we can build things out. I'm not actually sure. Can I go and connect it to one of those existing tables? Let's just try it and see if that actually works. So if I say I want to connect to a SQL database, uh, can I tell it that's Synapse? I can point it at Synapse. Um, and it's just going to go into my Synapse 1. Why not? So that should work because it is just a database endpoint. It treats it like any other SQL DB. Now what? I've only got master there. Yeah, so it's it's not understanding these other databases, the, the Hive style database, the logical database that sits behind serverless SQL pools. We can't register those yet. Or if there is a way, I'm not aware of it yet. And I'm sure I will get various people from the uh, Purview and or Synapse teams correcting me very shortly. And that'll be great. And then I'll tell you how it works. So <laughs> that's currently the limitation. We can register things from the SQL, uh, the dedicated SQL pools. That's about it. 
I mean, going work with it works like everything else. We can do that. Not SQL. Uh, we'll see it as an object in SQL DW. We can see these objects being registered. So we can see the fact that we've got that high level server. We can see it has gone and got all the objects that sit inside it. So not SQL DW. I can see related. I get my schema in there. I get my list of tables that are in there. I can go and see what's inside products. Um, and then inside product, I get my schema, I get my lineage, I get all of the same stuff that you expect. So customer, I'm kind of expecting to see some classifications. Great. So the data scanning, uh, the way it goes and understands it and does all the purview type stuff, that all works exactly the same way on top of the dedicated SQL calls here. But it's just, it's not yet able to say, here are the hive tables. Here's what you've registered over the lake. Here's the various serverless um, SQL pool objects, views, whatever it is I've created. So it is, it's not really giving you that full view of everything that's happening inside Synapse. Now, the thing I was, uh, I'd left running uh, because it was taking ages to run. <laughs> the thing I'd left running because uh, it failed. Um, I'm not currently seeing any lineage come through from the ADF jobs or the data pipeline jobs that I run inside of Synapse through to Azure Purview. Now, again, I'd originally assumed that doing that linking of Synapse and saying, Synapse, here's a Purview account you're associated with, would do the same as a data factory and start pushing out the operational data, the lineage data. Doesn't appear to be the case. And on the other side, when we're in Purview, you know, where we go and say, here's a data factory, I want to associate with you with that data factory. And then anytime it runs, go and harvest that lineage info. Now, I don't have that advancing Synapse available. I've only got data factories and you can see I have many data factories, but I don't have that data factory available, a Synapse data factory. Um, it's also, I don't have a way to associate a, a Synapse workspace. So currently you can't do lineage tracking that I've seen, might be wrong, might be a trick to it, but you can't do lineage tracking through the ADF data pipelines inside of um, Synapse. So it does seem to be a little bit of a gap. Now, there's a lot of focus on that at the moment. So I'm kind of assuming that's a preview thing, that a preview thing in purview, that's something that's going to get fixed up and then we're going to get a magic shiny button that says, properly associate this and actually scrape all the things. I'm hoping that would be awesome. Um, currently, there are some gaps and limitations as to just how plumbed in your signups can be to the rest of purview. But still, even so, the purview um, integration into signups, I just love it. Love being able to go, what have I got? Tell me across all my things. Go and connect to that one, please. In fact, so if I go customer uh, and I've got the ADF version as well, so we can see what's in there. Just that ability to say, I want the one that's a database. Go and find the database version of it. I want to go and connect to that one. I can still do data flows. It's just weird. Um, but just, I, I can see that turning into something very powerful. Just the sitting in my signups workspace going, I want to connect to oh, anything to do with bank accounts. Okay. Here were the four data sets I've got back accounts. Let's connect and do some data masking, data obfuscation. Let's connect and do a quick bit of data profiling and see if it has been correctly handled. Let's go and find anywhere that has a customer name and go and treat it for some GDPR style stuff. But I can do it rather than purview, which would give me a list. And I'd have to then take that list and put it somewhere else, give it to someone else. Being able to do it directly from inside um, the Synapse workspace, super useful. Really, really useful bit of um, empowerment of people who are inside that uh, Synapse workspace. So again, still still room to improve, still more things that we need to see in there. Kind of disappointed I'm not seeing a lot of the lineage stuff. Again, that might be me missing something. Um, the next thing I wanna try inside Purview is doing the um, the Power BI side. So a lot of the demos that we've seen, a lot of kind of the initial kind of um, shiny marketing slideware that we've seen had data lineage as a few different hops happening in the data platform world, in the lakes, in data factory and that kind of stuff. And then, registering that as a data set, using that in a report, having that on a dashboard, and all that lineage mapped out automatically. So I want to see how nicely that fits in. Now, it's probably going to be missing some pieces of that puzzle if I'm using Synapse to do everything, but then it'd be missing pieces of the puzzle if I was using Databricks to do everything, and I would have to use the API to manually plug those gaps anyway, so it doesn't really change much. So that is all I wanted to have a look at today, to give you a little bit of a glimpse under the bonnet hood depends if you're in America, <laughs> of what is going on in this Synapse Purview integration, just so you get that kind of a uh, bit of an idea of what's going on and how it currently works. Now, I'm pretty sure this video is going to get dated quite quickly. I'm pretty sure there are going to be new features, new improvements coming in to improve that relationship, improving compatibility, 
Um, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what gets released. As always, thank you for staying with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, let us know if there's any other pieces of Synapse, Purview, Databricks, anything else you would like us to cover. Drop it down in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll catch you next time. Cheers.